just because you can never have enough spoke shames. I bet you thought I was gonna say mallets. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to the corner of my shop. Um, today I built this uh, the mallet rack. Well, I've in the past I built a plane till and a saw till and a chisel rack. I'm be building several other racks in the future, but I wanted to kind of go into this. It's a fairly simple little build, and I know there's going to be a lot of people out there who are like, oh, he used screws, and I'm like, yes, I use screws because I do want to be able to take it apart in the future um, or change some things around. So there are screws in this, but to make up for that, I put dovetails on the ends. So those of you who don't like screws, I hope you like the dovetails. <laughs> this is a, a fun, simple build. And uh, let's dive in. So let's do a little bit of a planning for a change. I actually wanted to figure out how much space do I need and how much space do I want? How much space will I learn to have in the future? <laughs> so I laid them all out on uh, most of the mallets I have, at least the ones I want in this rack. And then figured out what is the average thickness, what is the, the size of the handle, how big does the gap need to be, and uh, how far apart do they all need to be spaced. In the end, I came up with a uh, measurement of 50 inches long total, and let's cut the board to uh, 50 inches long. This one is about five inches wide. It had this bit of, uh, uh, well, rotten or pithy edge on it from the, where it was right underneath the bark. It was a bit of the sap wood that uh, um, dried up. So I decided to use the draw knife and clean that up and kind of give it a live edge feel. That way it'll also match the shelf that is above it. The next thing I need is another board that's about three inches. Uh, this will be the one that actually gets mounted to the wall. The five inch one is what all the mallets will hang on. And I just use the, the first one to mark the length of the second one. That way I know that these will be precisely the same length. Once I have that end, I need to make a gusset that will connect these two together at 90 degrees. So I can lay out the mark, um, I lay out the board and mark at either point where it intersects the top and bottom, and then draw a line between those two marks with a straight line. Once I have those in, then I can cut this 45 degree angled piece. Uh, this will end up getting dovetailed onto the board that goes on the wall. Uh, just put it up in the vise so that the cut is vertical, and then follow the line. It's really not that difficult to cut any angle because, well, 90 degrees is also an angle. Now let's go on to the dovetail. With these uh, two little 45 degree pieces, I want to cut the tail in those. Now my method of cutting the dovetails is I do very, very little layout. I have the, the stop cut line and that's it. Uh, everything else is just by eyeball and I say I want the tail to be about that size and about that bit. And voila, I have a tail. I really don't need to work very hard at this. Um, it doesn't need to be precise. It doesn't need anything specific. Um, I can just cut the angle that I want and that's what I got. Then I can cut off the ends, and the only bit of chisel work I really need to do on the tail is just removing that little bit at the, the bottom that the, the saw can't quite get. So once I have the tail cut on these, then I can put it on the main board, draw out those lines, cut down on the lines from that, and then this is the pin board. Um, that I transfer all the marks to and then I can come in and remove the waste from that. I have an entire video on doing dovetails, so I'm not going to, into it very deeply in this. Actually, I actually have several videos on that if you want to see uh, more about my method. Very quick, very easy. This really only took about, uh, I think, what, seven, eight, maybe ten minutes most to do both the dovetails on the end. And uh, they go together really nicely. First try, and that's all you need. It's a really nice, quick little joint. Once that is done, we can glue this up, and then we're going to set this backboard aside and start working on the top board that will get a bunch of knots, notches for the mallets to sit in. For the depth of those notches, I'm going to bore out a hole, and I have marks laid out on this so that most of them are about three inches apart, some of them are about two inches apart, some of them are a little bit less than that. Once I've bored out all those holes, then I'll use a square to draw a line from the side of each hole out to the front. And this will be what I will then come in with a saw and cut out. And after drawing all these lines, we can put it up in the vise vertically and then cut down those lines. Just as before, follow the line and make your cut down to the sides of each circle. Now the problem with this is it will leave a little bit of a, of a fuzz where the saw stops and where the circle is. So I will come in with a file and clean those up and give it a nice smooth transition on each one of those. And it ends up being a fairly nice thing. I'm not doing too much more to this. I'm, I'm leaving the saw marks on there. Uh, it doesn't need to be anything terribly per per 
pretty. Uh, but I do want to clean up the top and give those a nice chamfer, uh, just because that's where the 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 mallets will be sitting and they might catch the edge and rip up the the grain. So putting a little bit of chamfer on there just makes them look a little bit more fun. <laughs> so I'll cut in all the way from one side to the other side and uh, stop at the back of the circle. And this just gives it a really nice, clean little transition. And this was a lot of fun just to do a little bit of almost carving. The next thing I need to do is make the cleats that attach to the wall. You can see I have several pieces set already finished, and I need to assemble these together. I have a French cleat wall, and these need to hang on there. So basically you have a, a French cleat, which is a block with an angle, and I'm going to screw that to another block. And then I'm going to put a third block on the bottom, and this thing will then clamp onto the French cleat that's on the wall. And you can see how here I'm fitting it. I have the, the angled block attached to the back block, and then I'm putting the third block on. Once I find that, that measurement between them, I then clamp it together and then drill out in between those. Um, just uh, running some screws in, and then I know that this is the proper distance for that particular track. And you can see how it just pops on. And this allows it so it doesn't tip forward, it only tips back. Um, so it's never going to fall away from the wall. Next thing I need to do is attach the comb to the dovetailed piece that has been drying. And I'm just going to do that again with several screws and drive those in. Um, this way, if I ever need to change anything on this comb, I can take it off. If I ever need to make it longer, I can take it off and uh, work on it that way. The next thing was attaching those uh, two cleats to the back of the, the main body and then giving it a paste wax and uh, boiled linseed oil finish. I just love the way the boiled linseed oil brings out the color in this white oak. Uh, no matter what the project is, this is just a fantastic, fantastic color. And the white oak just explodes. I absolutely love it. Next thing is hang it up on the wall and install all the mallets. Now some might say I have too many mallets, but you haven't been in a lot of woodworking shops. Um, I really have a fairly slim collection, but soon I'll fill them out. So there you have it, a uh, mallet rack. Everything is here within quick reach. I can turn around and grab it, I can use it, and I can keep going. This was a lot of fun to work with. Um, if you'd like to see the other videos on tool racks here, I'm also, also gonna be making other tool racks for um, drill bits and auger bits and things like that, and uh, um, marking gauges and uh, things of that nature. So keep your eye open for those videos coming out soon. I do wanna say thank you to the patrons on Patreon. I don't have any sponsored videos on here, so the words I say are straight from what I want to say and not what a sponsor wants me to say. I hope you like that. If you'd like to find out more about Patreon, you can do so right down there. Also, if you'd like to subscribe and see some behind-the-scenes footage, you can do that as well. That's about it for today, and until next time, have a wonderful day.